think any of us were really chasing a, to make a 3D movie, you know? And um, and it, what, it, what it mimics in a really wonderful way without feeling miniaturized is like an old-fashioned multi-plane camera. Oh, cool. It's pretty jaw-dropping. We all put on our glasses to see the, the cemetery scene with the snow for the first 3D thing we saw, and we all went, Whoa! Yeah. <laughs> oh, and we've seen a lot of that. Yeah. We're professional. This is the first 3D movie it. ever. We've seen a lot of it. But it was crazy. Okay, who has another question? Lady right there. Uh, I'm Lady. Uh, <laughs> I'm giving you a whole name, so except your new name. Lady. Uh, lady. First of all, thank you guys so much. Was there anything yeah. easy? That yeah, is, it, was, it was no. It was like a, a years-long challenge. I mean, the easiest thing was failing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm sure everyone here could answer something different. You know, one thing that I'll throw out there is it just it's a it's a it's a pretty wild mix of tones and um, story elements and all kinds of things that you know during the 98 percent of the process when it's not yet gelling. It's, yeah, it, it's really tricky, and we actually found when our composer came in, I remember he was really noticing, like, oh, for some of these cues, I have to cycle through, like, seven, you know, ideas in one cue just to kind of integrate everything together. So, so that was really challenging for years to just sort of balance all these things and figure out where this movie want, wanted to live, you know, um, especially when you're dealing with comedy, too, where, like, you know, comedy can be really amazing and can energize the audience, and you know, but but comedy has many weird gradations, and you know, the wrong kind of joke in the wrong moment can really throw off the movie for like five minutes afterwards, all that kind of stuff. So so that was a lot of the work was was just trying to find whatever the weird specific tone that it lives in. You know, it took a long time to to get there. I think also I'll throw this one in really quick, like. That. Three years ago, three and a half years ago, convincing a studio that um, that they should tell like a father-son story. That seems strange, but it's true. Like there's so there's such a push to be different, and that's such an old-fashioned <laughs> sort of relationship story. Um, but the, it's there for a reason, you know. And it, and it was we were adapting the the material that was so good, and and to try to, I think the highest compliment I've had so far after one of these screenings was just someone saying to me that. That um, yeah, it's a father-son story, and, uh, and and there are familiar things obviously in it, but the way it's told, um, it makes it feel totally new and contemporary, and as if you guys found some new formula to filmmaking. Uh, and <laughs> okay, I, I also <laughs> want to give a shout out to Sony for letting us make a movie that looks like this, <laughs> and they, yeah. because yeah. it wasn't easy, and they were super nervous, but <laughs> to their credit, they they let us do this. And they and they supported us the whole way so, and and the, you know as far as challenges, I mean the, our biggest dream, our biggest goal, I think, was to keep this mild story, and uh, finding a way for that to happen with you know multiple dimensions and Peter Parker and all the characters and all the concepts we wanted to introduce. Yeah, I mean it, it was it was a real tight road to walk, but every, anytime we got in trouble really, or anytime the movie kind of seemed like it was going off the rails. The answer really did seem to be, well, let's take it back to Miles. How is Miles experiencing this? How is he feeling it? You know, how can we increase, uh, how can we increase the audience's identification with him so that you always have something to hold on to and a point of view, no matter how crazy things get. So that that was a pretty big challenge from day one. I, I was struck last night by how warm the movie is and how often characters are. Um, of trying to help one another and and are are in relative harmony, is this, and and how that asks the movie then to do emotionally sophisticated things, which is like I love my son, but I don't know how to help him, and I love my dad that he's messing up right now and it's bothering me, you know, and then my and that that forces Miles' dad to like check with him and make sure that he still loves him, you know those. Those nuances, like, are, are, and they're real, yeah. and we all recognize them, but they're hard to dramatize. And 
what's so I'm so impressed by, and I can say this because I had nothing to do with it, <laughs> is the the sophistication of the animated performances. Yes. Yeah. You know, and how they're able to convey these these complex emotional ideas without a whole lot of talking, just by the, the way the characters move, right? And that's like the whole thing. Yeah, yeah I think it's something that animation has gotten away with, is that we've gotten away from, you know, because you can do that in animation and uh, too much dialogue sometimes, sometimes the best stuff is best left to visuals. Um, I'm not ignoring you people up there, but I'm gonna do this guy here in the second row. Yeah. 